Hey guys, no this isn't a beer commercial, but the subject of our second ever tutorial. How to make Castile soap from scratch. Trust me, you're gonna love this one. Alright, let's jump right in and list the components that we'll need. Good thing is that it's a fairly short list. First, we'll need some beakers to weigh and measure chemicals. And no, they don't have to be graduated like these ones. Next, we'll need a beaker specifically for mixing, preferably made from metal because it's going to have to withstand extreme heat. A spatula will also help a lot. Also very important is a mixer. I have a link to some mixer options in the description below. Next we need a functioning scale. I prefer something that can measure up to 1 kilos. And that's most of the equipment. Next are the chemicals. Here the first thing we have is distilled water. Please try not to use tap water. Next we have potassium hydroxide and I urge extreme caution when using this material. It is extremely corrosive. It can burn skin and other tissues very easily. In fact, if we zoom into this pile here, you hear that? The potassium hydroxide is already reacting with the humidity in the air and creating heat. Very scary. And next is glycerin for skin emolliency. Followed by our three oils. Sunflower, olive oil, and coconut oil. And we top everything off with our preservative, phenoxyethanol. Oh, and one more thing. You will definitely need a heat source like this tabletop heater. Alright, step one. We've set up our heating apparatus. And we've already put coconut and sunflower oils in this beaker. And we are going to add approximately 100 grams of olive oil. Alright, here we go. Okay, with our oils measured out, let's go on to step 2. We're going to put our oils in the heating apparatus. If you haven't put on the heat yet, please do so at this point. Our goal is to heat everything to about 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. You can also put the mixer on at this point, although slowly. And now step 3. We are going to add glycerin and potassium hydroxide to water, very carefully. Here we are first adding glycerin, which is water soluble and we are going to add 100 grams to the beaker. And we're at 102 grams all well. Now, we're going to mix in the glycerin until it dissolves fully into the distilled water. That should only take a few seconds at the most. And now we're going to perform the most dangerous part of this tutorial, adding potassium hydroxide to our water mixture. So remember, always add potassium hydroxide to water. Never do it the other way around. So here we go. Make sure to mix everything together. As potassium hydroxide mixes with the water, it will release a lot of heat and a strong acrid smell, so be aware of that. Alright, this might be a good time to mention that all the batches of liquid Castile soap that I make here can be purchased from my Etsy store. Go to the link below, etsy.com slash shop slash scent evoker. This link is also in the description box below. And now step 4. 
While the oils are being heated, add the potassium hydroxide solution to the beaker. Once you do this, you should almost immediately start seeing a reaction inside the beaker, usually in the form of intense foaming and bubbling. As an important note, if you find that your beaker solution is foaming too much and threatening to pour out of the beaker, simply lower or remove the heat source altogether, lower the mixing speed, and then put the heat back on. Now we're going to play the waiting game. This chemical reaction can take a long time to go to completion, so we're going to have to take periodic breaks and check in in our beaker every once in a while. Okay, so we're doing a checkup after 30 minutes. I'm going to turn off the mixer to show you the progress we've made. You see the little floaters in the liquid? That's our soap starting to form. We're doing good, so let's turn the mixer back on and come back a little later. So we're back an hour later and we can already see a huge difference. Turning off the mixture, we can see that the soap is really coming into form. It looks like an opaque and slightly thicker gel, but it still needs a bit more processing. Let's come back later. Alright, this is it. This is it. This is the kind of thick texture that we are looking for. Something reminiscent of corn pudding. And just to verify that the soap is truly ready, all you have to do is add a little bit of your soap to a beaker of water. If you can mix the soap in thoroughly until the soap completely dissolves without too much haziness, your product is ready. Congratulations! To smooth out any lumpiness in your mixture and get rid of any excess air bubbles, I highly encourage you to mix your soap by hand for a few minutes. Ultimately, your soap is going to look like this super thick, semi-translucent substance right here. And when you combine your soap with equal parts water, you will get a beautiful amber castile soap. Ah, another job well done. Like I said before, the formula I use and other notes are in the description box below. Time for me to get out of here. I've got to check up on a strawberry shampoo I've been cooking up. Feel free to check out our other videos as we will start churning out more tutorials like this one. And if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks again. Bye now.